Hello guys, today we will see the simulation part of the building destruction. So let's dive into Houdini and continue from where we left off. First, we need to create the proper collider for the RBD. We can directly feed this as well, but we will create convex decomposition for this. This will be a better practice in the future. Take a time shift node and freeze the first frame. Now take a scatter node and scatter around 28 points. Take a Voronoi fracture node. Let's see the pieces using an exploded view. Now take a convex decomposition node. Let's reduce the max concavity to 0 0.35. Now let's point deform it with the animation. If you see this bat travel much distance in one frame. We need to add a time blend node to add subframe data. Here I accidentally took the retime node instead of time blend. Turn off the interpolate rotation and use velocity. If you toggle on subframe data. Now you can see that on each float frame, the bat is moving. Add a normal node. Lastly, add a null node. Now our collider is prepared. Let's move to the building part. Take an RBD unpack node. Here we have three outputs. The first one will be the high resolution geo, the second one will be the constraint geo and the third one will be the proxy geo. For now, we will work on the constraint. Take an attribute VOP node. Take a Voronoi noise node. Promote the frequency and offset parameters. Now here we need this seed parameter to be exported as a seed attribute. To visualize the noise we can add a random node. Here in the signature select 1D integer, 3D color. Let's connect this to CD. We are just creating a glue cluster kind of thing here, but we are doing manually everything. Let's increase the frequency to 0 0.4. Take a RBD constraint property node. Here we will use two constraints, glue and soft. Once the glue constraint gets broken, then it will convert it to soft. As you know the soft constraints don't break automatically, we have to break them by giving some conditions. Here in the switch constraint when broken select enable. In the next constraint type select soft. In the strength set the value to 3000. Turn on strength variance. Set its value to 0.4 what this strength variance will do. By using this parameter, the glue constraint will not have the same value on every primitive, it will have a difference of 40%. If you go into the spreadsheet, you can see the value difference. If we turn off this, you can see the same value. Now this propagation value. This value will react how fast it will spread the impact on other pieces. Propagation rate will decide how fast the impact will spread and the iteration value will decide how many times it will iterate on a single frame. Keep this value to 3. Suppose here I have 4 pieces. If a bat hits one piece how fast the impact will spread on the other neighboring pieces. The half-life means, how fast the impact will die. Now take a primitive wrangle and write this code. Make sure that we have class and seed attributes here on the constraints. 
seems like I forgot to export the seed attribute from the attribute VOP node. Go inside the VOP node take a bind export node and connect it to the seed. In the name write seed. In the type select integer. This code modifies the strength attribute based on conditions related to the seed and class attributes of two points associated with the current primitive. The code is looking at two points connected to a shape. If the seed values of those points are different, it weakens the strength. Similarly, if the class values are different, it weakens the strength but less than the seed. Take another primitive wrangle. Here in the group select balcony glass using name attribute. We need to set the glass constraint strength to less as compared to other parts. Write this code. Now take an RBD configured node. Let's transfer the component attribute as well. We might need this for post fixing. Now toggle on the active and turn on use bound. Take a box node and connect it to fourth input. Now scale the box size and add the building which we need to keep as active pieces. In the physical attribute select concrete. Now take a DOP network. If you see the anime, the bat hit the building in frame 37. So we will keep the starting sim frame to 35. Now let's create the basic DOP setup with collision geometry. In the RBD packed object, select the source geometry as the first context geometry. Now in the bullet data turn on create convex hull per set of connected primitives. Set the collision padding to 0.005. Let's play it and check whether everything is working or not. You can see here, that the pieces are getting broken. Cool. Now let's add the constraint. Take a constraint network node. In the second input take a glue constraint node. Set the strength to 500. Propagation iteration to 2. Now take a bullet soft constraint. Set the stiffness value to 1. In the constraint network select the source to the second context of geometry. Now if you had done the procedure properly, then the constraint of red color should appear in the viewport. Break the channel of overwrite with SOP and keep the value to 0. Now let's add the collision geometry in the static object. 
Copy the null and paste it here. Go to the Collision tab and select Bullet Data. Turn on Create a Convex Hull per set of connected primitives. Set the collision padding to 0.001. Turn off Shrink Collision Geometry. If you see, the bat is passing through the collision and the soft constraint is also not breaking. Take a SOP solver. Dive inside. Not connect the output to relationship geometry. Take a primitive wrangle and connect it. In the group select soft constraint. Here we will break the soft constraint on three conditions. 1. Distance. 2. Angle. 3. Impact. Write the if statement and add the condition. If you wonder how I'm reading this attribute. This attribute automatically gets generated in the constraint network when we simulate it. As you can see in the spreadsheet. Let's again play. It is still passing through the pieces, but the constraints are getting broken now. If you see the bat movement, it travels fast, and the solver is not able to read the subframe data because of low substeps. Before increasing the substeps, let's tweak a few things in the solver to get better results. Decrease the contact breaking threshold to 0.01. Now increase the substep to 3. Let's play and see how this looks. Cool. Now since the bat is throwing the pieces, the pieces will get far away. Let's add some speed limit and drag force. Take a pop speed limit node. Turn on the maximum speed and set the value to 30. Turn on using VEX expression. From the drop-down menu select Randomize Spin and Speed. Now in the third input take a Merge node. Take a Geometry Wrangle and write this code. This will reduce the angular velocity on each frame. Which will help to reduce the speedy and continuous angular motion. Take a Pop Drag node. Set the air resistance to 0.002. Turn on use vex expression and write this code. We will assign the drag value randomly based on the point using the fit01 function. Let's play it. Seems like I mistyped the code. I wrote fit, it should be fit01. Here it should be 1.1, .1, not 1. 1. Now take a DOP import node and import the sim as points. Cache it to disk. Let's add a transform pieces node and see how this looks by creating the playblast. Cool. This looks nice. In the next lecture, we will see the debris and pyro. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.